podcast personal finance edition i'm rashmi and i'm joined by my co-host olivia today we're going to talk about investing in the banking sector so the banking sector usually comprises of companies that provide financial services such as retail banks insurance companies and investment services so overall this sector has a really big impact on the economy as a whole so i mean just think back to the 2008 financial crisis or the great depression where changes in the economy as a whole were really at the fault of failure in the banking system which is why a lot of people think of investing in the banking sector as a good place to invest just because it's so influential and it's also the most trustworthy sector because it's very government associated usually what banking sectors like yes we had the great depression in the 2008 crisis but this is not like an everyday occurring thing and we always learn more from one after the other so i think this is definitely a great way to start when you want to invest yeah and i'll touch upon this more a little later but it is one of the most heavily regulated industries so it is a safe place to invest for sure so generally speaking there are three major types of financial banks that you can invest in so the first one is commercial banks which is for in- individual customers. So when you hear of the word bank and you think of like, oh, that's the place where I save my money, I have a checking account, and that's where I get my debit and credit card, whatever. That's what you think of. So that, for example, that would be like US Bank Corp or Wells Fargo. Yeah, and the other type is investment banks, which are banks that provide financial services on a wider scale to corporations, companies, and governments. And some examples of these are Morgan Stanley and the Goldman Sachs. And then kind of the mixture of the two of those is universal banks, which, for example, is Bank of America, Citigroup, J.P. Morgan Chase, which offer both commercial and investment banking services, which means they are a more diversified revenue stream. This, I think, is what a lot of our minds gravitate to more when we think of universal banks. A lot of banks that we might think are just commercial banks are really for both large corporations and individuals. Yeah, and kind of tying into that, Banks are a need for everyone, whether you're a corporation, the government, or even just you as a person. And it will always exist as an industry for people to manage their money. It's kind of similar to healthcare, where you'll always have healthcare, no matter what technological advancements happen. And in the same way, the allocation and safeguarding of money is something that's going to happen throughout the lifetime. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about this for a long time, but money is essential to our society and holding money, growing it, investing it. The whole point of personal finance is centered around money and you need banks for that, which is why investing in banks is a good place to look for when you're trying to start investing. And on top of all of that, banking isn't really a complex corporation as a whole. Obviously, there are niches to the specific ways that each type of bank might function, but generally speaking, it's a simple business model. I mean, you deposit money, that money gets loaned out to another person, banks make money from interest. Like, it doesn't really get crazy complex from there. Yeah, and especially banks have had a very, you know, strong rebound after like the 2008 financial crisis. If you really think about how banks jump back from, you know, any sort of yeah. struggles, like banks will come back from that. Yeah, exactly. And that's something that's really important to keep in mind is that once a bank fails, it's not, it's completely over. Like they're either another bank will take over it or that bank will rebound itself. If you think about the Silicon Valley bank, you know, when it, when it failed, it yes, it failed, but then another bank, you know, bought that, which kind of shows that it always will be continuing. Yeah. And that's why banks are a really good choice for value investors because, bank stocks can fluctuate a lot like even if you think of the silicon valley bank crisis of course their stock dropped but then it kind of rebounded once it was bought by another company so the fact that bank stocks are changing so much individually like day by day means that you can trade them for less than their intrinsic value at the current market price yeah and also bank stocks are susceptible to short-term changes because of the nature of the sector a lot of things are dependent on the bank and so when they see something happening to the bank people will pull out or put more money in and you can see that fluctuation happen really really fast and that's what we can take advantage of as investors by making banks not a short-term but a long-term investment so that all of those 
short-term fluctuations turn into long-term gains. Yeah, and something that we can also think about is how banking sectors pay dividends. And having a longer dividend history is actually better for investors because it indicates a longer track record of success. What I also like to think about when I consider investing in the banking sector is that this is a sector that's a favorite of Warren Buffett. So more than $80 billion of the $330 billion of Berkshire Hathaway stocks portfolio is actually in this industry, according to The Motley Fool, which is always reassuring when a successful investor does invest in a sector that you are considering investing in in the near future. Yeah, and something else that you should know when you're if you're considering to invest in a banking stock or an ETF is that they actually do well when the economy is growing, like GDP is rising or becoming a, a booming house market. And that's really important because bankings are usually very associated with the macro economic side of um, the country. So it's very good to know that if you see something happening really well in the macroeconomic scale, that that probably translates to the banking sector as well. Yeah, so you can consider that banking stocks are probably going to succeed as the economy is succeeding and use that as an indicator of whether now is a good time to invest or not. So that also lends to the fact that banking stocks are more of a middle risk investment. They're not really high risk, they're not really low risk, so they're probably a good fit for most investors. And that's really good. It's the fact that it's in the middle of the spectrum is mostly because it's a business that's regulated by the government. Like we can think about like the federal like you know reserve and things of that nature. That is kind of what keeps it in that middle sector. And it it was really it was more regulated, especially after the two thousand eight financial crisis as well. Yeah, and investment banks are usually really strong during recessions, unlike commercial banks. So if that does scare you that there's the possibility of an economic recession or even just an economic panic affecting the banking sector, you can consider investing in investment banks because those are the larger scale banks instead of focusing just on commercial banks. But this also, this what Olivia kind of talked about is also kind of a con because banking is a cyclical industry and it's very sensitive to real world issues and recessions such panics. I mean, we talked about how, you know, the macroeconomic status of the country is very, you know, affecting what the banking stocks do. And if it grows, it's great. But if it drops, it's also going to have a negative impact. Right. The banking system relies on customer feelings and whether customers are willing to spend or borrow. I mean, I always think to myself that we can think ourselves into a recession. And if we think ourselves into a recession, we are going to hurt the banking industry as a whole and in turn any investments in that industry that we do have. Yeah. And if you kind of think about like the Silicon Valley bank crisis, which why it happened was because there was huge withdrawals in banks and dropping and that dropped bank stocks on a wide scale, despite no major indication of trouble in the banking is- industry as a whole. So there's a heavy reliance on customers on how well banks do. And then furthermore, the, the industry relies on consumers being able to pay off their debts to do well, because a bank will not continue to function if it cannot complete its role or its job. Yeah, and that kind of goes into inter- interest rates as well. I mean, if you're getting a loan, interest rates matter a huge deal. And having drops in those interest rates can hurt bank profits as well, because that's kind of where they get most of their revenue from. They use the interest from the people who are you know trusting the bank and they use that to invest in other securities and so if you see those drops in interest rates that will really really affect them yeah and it might not always be a huge impact but it is still worth considering that interest rates do impact the industry because we can always go back to the idea that if individuals know that interest rates are high they'll be more hesitant to borrow or take a loan out from a bank, which will in turn impact the success of the banking system. And another thing that's worth considering is that the future of the banking industry is uncertain. I mean, obviously banks will always be valuable and necessary to an extent. There are different types of banking institutions that seem to be rising and might have a really strong potential in the future. So the fintech industry is growing a lot, and it's interesting to consider what implications that might have on the banking industry. 
Well, regardless of the fintech, you know, industry, even though it's a little different, we will always have banking. And that's kind of that reassurance that you need that this is a great place to invest in. And banking sector is something you guys should definitely consider if you want to start your investing career. And that's kind of all we have today for the banking sector. Thanks for tuning in. This is Rashmi and Olivia. Cash and off. off.